Welcome everyone to the Aspire Leaders Info Session. We'll get started in just a few minutes. In the meantime, you'll see some slides of participants from the past few years, obviously on Zoom, um, but you can see that there's students from all over the world, including Brazil, other countries in Latin America, but also all over the globe. And while you are waiting, if you want to put in the chat um, where you're from today, you know, if you're if you're not from Brazil or if you're from a certain city, let us know how did you hear about Aspire Leaders and, and maybe this event today and any other fun facts that you want to share. That would be great. We'd love to see where you're joining us from. So we have Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started just because you know it's a little past 6 p.m. probably where most of you are and I don't wanna keep you into your dinner time this evening, but uh, welcome, as I said, to the Aspire Leaders Program Info Session in partnership with some great organizations in Brazil. Uh, so I'd like to introduce them first to just welcome you all today. So um, let's start uh, with uh, East March, would you like to say a welcome? Sure. Hello, everyone. My name is Mauricio. I am an analyst here at Smart. Uh, we are here with Julia also as well. Uh, I can see some of our students right here. Uh, Fabiana Carvalho, uh, our manager, was supposed to be here, but she couldn't join yet. Um, but we are very pleased to be here with Aspire Institute and um, other partners. Uh, we think that this is a life-changing opportunity and we expect to see some of our students approve this program. Wish you all good luck. Thank you, Gina. Thank you. And then uh, do we have anybody here from Encina? Okay, well, they were they uh, also partnered with us today and you may have heard from them about this program. So we thank them. And um, I know that uh, Vetor was not able, nobody uh, from their team could join today, but they wanted to say that they are very excited to have found a partner such as uh, the Aspire Institute. And uh, they are very grateful to share with us the path to promote a more equal world through the development of young and representative leaders. And they'd love to hear who joined today that maybe um, you know, heard about this session from them. So, so thank you to them. And then um, Legisla, would you like to, to just say a, a welcome from uh, Julia? Yeah, thank you, Gina. Uh, we really appreciate this opportunity. 
and I, I think I was speaking Portuguese. Mas <laughs> um, pessoal, a Legisla trabalha para profissionalizar a política. A gente tem tido um recorte bem grande, né, para incentivar com que não só jovens, mas profissionais que também são da primeira geração da família cursal e ensino superior estejam ocupando espaços nos bastidores da política. Então, a gente tem um programa que a gente acabou de finalizar a seleção e a parceria com a Aspire Institute vem mais como uma forma de ajudar a desenvolvê-los para que estejam cada vez mais preparados para os desafios que a gestão pública e ainda mais o legislativo trazem né, para o nosso Brasil e a gente sabe que o contexto não é muito bom. Então, fica aqui o nosso boa sorte também para quem for se inscrever no Aspire, que a jornada de vocês seja incrível. E o convite para depois de formados, depois dessa troca que a gente imagina que vai ser muito rica de experiências, vocês também estejam integrando espaços de poder aqui no Brasil para a gente conseguir fazer alguma diferença junto. Obrigada. Thank you so much. And is anyone here from Instituto 4? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, hello. Hello, Jenna. Uh, Lucas isn't able to, to get here, so I'm here to represent the Instituto 4. Uh, we are responsible for the Pro Leader. Uh, it's the, the, the largest leadership training program in Brazil uh, for both public leaders and entrepreneurs. So we are very happy to be here and welcome everybody. Great, thank you uh, to all of our partners and I hope that uh, you, you know, are able to, we're able to work together moving forward and we thank you for, for helping us put on this event and bring on uh, so many students to hear more about Aspire. So um, I am now going to play a short video which gives you a little bit more information about the Aspire Leaders Program. Then we'll give you a little bit more details about each stage of the program. We'll hear from some of our alumni who are from Brazil who are here with us today. And then we'll walk you through the application process a little bit, take all of your questions, and uh, that will be it for this evening. So if you do have questions as we go along, you can put them in the chat or you can save them for our Q&A session. But we'll try and get to as many as we can during our hour together this evening. Sorry for the delay. Here we go. So as you can see, the eligibility requirements were for students who are 18 to 26 years old, 
currently enrolled in an undergraduate program or recently graduated, but not enrolled in any type of master's or postgraduate program. They are from a low income background and they are first in their family to go to college, meaning that neither their parents nor their grandparents have completed an undergraduate program. So they're the very first. So those are the basic eligibility requirements. And the goal is to provide a multi-stage leadership development program that supplements what you're already doing in university. And so um, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Erica, to go into a little bit more detail about the program itself. Thank you so much, Jenna. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you, Jenna. Um, so um, it, like Jenna mentioned, well, I'm first of all, very glad to be here with you all this um, afternoon with you um, and to get to talk a little bit about the program that we work with here as, at Aspire and just kind of walk you through all of the different stages of this program. Um, my name is Erica, I'm the, I'm the admissions and alumni manager for the Aspire team. Um, so I will be one of the people who will be reviewing the applications and getting to know you, um, you know, at a deeper level as we read your material that you submit. Um, so I'm really excited to see some of you all applying to the program in the coming days, if you haven't already. Um, so I know we already went over some of the eligibility for the program itself, so I'm just going to go ahead and dive into the stages of this program because Aspire is essentially a fully funded leadership development program that has multiple stages, as you can see on the graphic, um, that is intended for first generation students. So the first stage of considering that you've submitted your application, right, you meet the criteria, um, you go to stage one of the program, which um, really is uh, online testing. So we send you an online assessment that you complete sort of like on your own time. We give you a one week period to, um, to access the, the assessment and complete it. It covers four topics. Um, there's an English comprehension, comprehension section. There is a logic section, math, and then a writing section. Um, it roughly takes about an hour and 20 minutes to complete this assessment. If you do it in one sitting, you can always also um, sort of like, you know, do the first couple of sections of the assessment of the test, save it, and then go back to uh, complete it at a later time, as long as you all do it within like a 72 hour period after you've started. Um, we, you, we use that as part of your material to sort of like get to know you, what your skill levels are both in English and just like in general. Um, and English is a little bit important, a little bit important because the entire program is offered in English. So you do need to have a certain level of English um, so that you can communicate with your others, the other students in the program, understand the lectures. By no means do you have to be perfect. Um, most of us, English is not even our first language, including me. Um, so everyone will sort of come at their own, you know, skill level. But as long as you feel comfortable enough, you know, engaging with other students, the faculty during live webinars, um, if you have a good comprehension when you're listening to a course, that should be enough. Um, you do not have to have a perfect level of English, um, not at all. So. Again, that's stage one of the program. After you've completed that and you do the assessment, we invite you to stage two of the program, which is a set of online courses that we offer. So like I mentioned, you must have completed stage one to move into this stage. Here, you get the opportunity to take a few online courses, some Harvard X courses through us. There will be one uh, required course um, on leadership and it does encompass like a broad view of leadership. So you could be coming from any, um, any discipline. So you could be someone hoping to become a lawyer, going to politics, right, public service or medicine, it doesn't really matter um, because it is broad enough that it's applicable to pretty much any profession. Um, so that is a required course that we, um, um, we asked you to sign up for and as the institute covers your fee for earning the certificate. So if you do complete the course in, during the time that you're given, you would also receive a Harvard X certificate for completion of that course. Um, in addition to that, we also ask you to audit one other course. So we have four electives that you get to choose from covering a variety of topics. You get to do that on your own time as well. Um, you do not, you don't have to earn the certificate, but we do ask that you complete it. And all of those who complete it are then invited to a live seminar with the faculty of that course to sort of like do a deep dive into the course material and discuss with the faculty, which tends to be a very lively conversation as you can imagine. Um, after we've gone through stage two, we invite you to stage three, which is comprised of some live faculty webinars. Um, so these webinars last typically between an hour to like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. 
and they really cover, cover a really good range of topics. So we have faculty not just from within Harvard University, but also from universities from around the world who are experts in their profession, in their fields, right? And so there's a good combination of um, the backgrounds of the faculty, where they're coming from globally, as well as the topics that, you know, that they cover their expertise. And we essentially ask you to sign up for whichever ones you want to attend. So if you're particularly in particularly interested in medicine and health and policy, you know, there would be something for you if you're interested in politics, there'd be something for you as well. You're interested in the arts and the humanities, there's going to be courses for that as well. So we will try, we do try to cover as many sort of sectors as we can and to have a good variety. Um, once we get through um, the third stage of the program, this is where we invite sort of like our top participants, top students who've, you know, engaged, they've gone through the stage one, two, and three, they've taken, you know, several of the, um, the webinars, they've engaged with the material, um, and sort of like shine, you know, um, through the participation so far, we invite them to become semifinalists in the program. So that stage, they're, like I mentioned, the top candidates of the program itself. Um, those students are then invited to submit a final application to the final um, stage of the program, stage five. During, so during the semifinals, it's still in stage four, we're going to work with you to make sure that you're able to put together this application. So the application is going to uh, require a few more things than you submitted initially. So you're going to have to submit a, um, a personal essay, some trans transcripts from your school, a letter of recommendation, and a resume. So for example, if you don't have experience, um, you know, creating like a personal essay to apply for a program or for admissions to a program, that's fine. We're going to help you, you know, write that from from scratch essentially um, same thing with a resume you know if you've never had to write a resume for yourself that's fine we're going to walk you through we're going to um, part of the program is really to also just equip you with all of these skills um, that you know will be helpful during the program but also beyond that these are things you can take you know with you after you do the program if you're in, interested in maybe down the line applying for a master's program it's helpful to already have a good sense of how to create these materials right because usually these are components of applications to um, to master's or postgraduate programs so we again walk you through that whole process you submit your application from the semifinalists, we select a final cohort. So you become a finalist and you're gonna meet a couple of finalists from um, the previous year um, in a few minutes. So you become a finalist. Um, those students who make it to that final round in stage five um, are invited to two, two main things. So they first are invited to a two weekend live session um, for finalists. So that is a live program that takes place over a couple of weekends. Right now we have that scheduled in June of this year. So be, before that, you'd also be given some like reading material because part of that, those two weekends is gonna be sort of like classes. So you will get to do some case studies with some of the professors that work with us. So like our co-founders who are um, Harvard Business School faculty, they teach a lot of their classes through case methods. So you'll get to experience that, which is if you've ever been in a classroom where they use cases to teach, it's really, it's great. It fosters an amazing conversation among the students and the faculty and you get to share ideas. Um, it's it's one of the, the ways that you teach here. So that's sort of like what you would get through, um, get out of that week. And you also get to know the rest of the finalists so well, because you're all gonna be together during those days. Um, so that's the first part of the final stage. The second part is that, you know, once that weekend is, those two weekends are finished in June, you're entered in a year long standard, extended leadership opportunity stage. So what that means is as a finalist, you're gonna have, um, the ability to apply for several opportunities. So for example, we will be offering some community action awards. So for, for example, you're in Brazil, right? If you have a project that you want to start in your community, right? Maybe it's a, like a library in your community, right? That there aren't enough resources for small children, right? Um, that, for example, could be a project and you need some seed funding. You essentially create a presentation, like a proposal to the faculty of the program where you're, you know, you're asking for an X amount of money, one of these awards that we're going to have, um, and you get to apply for it. And we've had many students essentially receive these grants to start um, brand new projects in their communities, and they've done amazing things. You also get to... Um, to have mentors, you're going to be able to be matched up with mentors within your own communities or countries, um, you know, keeping in mind the kind of career you're trying to pursue. Again, you get to also be part of this cohort of finalists and get to know each other so well. 
That's one of the big things that the program really offers is to create, extend your network, really create and extend a network of professionals like yourselves. Um, you also get to, you know, include some of the faculty even in that, in that, um, in that network. Um, and because we're doing this year, all of it online, um, it really makes it a lot easier to connect people, we connect you with people from all over the world. Um, so those are the five stages of the program. Um, I know it's quite a bit. <laughs> um, this graphic um, that Jenna is showing right now can also be found on our website if you want to read further about it or if you have any questions. We will be taking some we will be taking some questions at the end of the session about the program itself, the application process. But I just wanted to give you all a good overview of what the program entails. What are the things you can expect now? In, in terms of the timeline, like I mentioned, applications opened already in January. They're going to be open until March fifteenth. Um, the bulk of the program really will be happening between now and June. Like I mentioned, there's two weekends in June. But again, if you make it um, into the final stage, you become you know, a finalist in the program after June, you're also going to be engaged for another year with the program through those extended leadership opportunities that I mentioned. So it could last well over a year, depending on how far, how far you go. And you know, the truth is, as long as you're consistent, you move through the stages, you do all of the required tasks, you have a good, very good chance to move on to the later stages. And we, we hope to see you, um, you know, for this year's program. Thank you, Jenna. Great. So I'm sure that some questions have. Uh, started circulating in your brain, but hold on to those for just a little bit, um, because I would love to welcome some of our alumni who are here today to share a little bit about their experiences with you. One of them actually did a, a Legisla program, so um, he's here today, Ronaldo, and then we also have Fernanda. So, um, Fernanda, would you like to start and just share a little bit about your experience with what was the, the Crossroads Emerging Leaders Program and is now Aspire? Yes, thank you, Jenna. So, hello, guys. My name is Fernanda Rose. I'm from Guará. I live in a city called Guará here in Brasilia, the capital of Brazil, who, who do not know. So I'm 22 years old and I have a degree in pedagogy from University of Brasilia. I am currently working as a teacher. I am a teacher of kids. <laughs> so I could say that this program changed all my life. Um, first, because uh, when I had like the chance to participate in the, it was Crossroads Emerging Leaders and now it's the Aspire Leaders. So I had like these uh, opportunities, you know, uh, many job opportunities that came out to me that didn't have before. So for example, it was really difficult for me to get a job as a teacher here in Brazil. And after I, I have like this chance to participate in this program, I got like many opportunities and I have like many uh, vacancies and I was like, oh my gosh, which one I, 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 will, I will pick up because I am like, I don't know which one it was like, super crazy and now I am at a, at a really great school that we have here in, in Brazil and it's very new there in the United States. So uh, I could say also that I have like this chance, you know, to engage with peers of all around the world. Uh, nowadays, I keep contact with them. So we are like chatting in WhatsApp and Instagram. So I have like this contact with them. And I, I think uh, it's, really uh, great to know to for you guys to know you know about the opportunities that we have uh, during the program for example the grants so i got the the grant a professional grant of the voucher a voucher of to do the toefl that is the proficient test you know and it's really expensive so i didn't have like the money to pay for this voucher for this um, toefl um, test and with this program I got the 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 voucher and I am like now you know uh, looking for some universities to apply because I want to do a master's and everything and uh, I also got like uh, experience of mentorship so I had a mentor and this mentor she helped me a lot with you know with uh, how can I apply for a master's in the United States so how can I do uh, a resume? How can I do my personal statement and things like that? Um, what more I could say? Uh, okay, I could say that the Harvard faculty sessions, it was amazing. 
So I am from a humanity area, but I, I participated in many, in many workshops about many uh, subjects. One of them, it was Python. <laughs> you know, I, I am not the, uh, the kind of girl that likes, you know, programming and everything. But after this, this session, I was like super curious and I started to, to, to learn more about Python. And nowadays I have a website and I created using Python. So it was like a, a really great um, Harvard faculty action session, sorry. And I think it's that, uh, okay, I, I would like only to, to know, you guys to know that we have like the courses like uh, Erica was presenting. So the Harvard X, that is the platform, you know, of courses of Harvard. So yes, I have like a certificate of Harvard here. And I did a course introduction to digital humanities. And it was amazing with Professor uh, Tarun Kana that I have like the experience to know him during the faculty sessions too. So yes, you guys are going to meet some professors of Harvard and many uh, other um, universities of the United States and et cetera. And I think that's it. Thank you so much for the opportunity. And I, I hope you guys join, can join with us in this program this year. Thank you so much. You, you really uh, told us about a lot of parts of the program. Um, and I'm sure there might be some questions from students later on that you can help answer too. Um, but thank you so much for talking about all the different parts of the program that were valuable to you, such as the global reach and, and being able to interact with all of your global peers on WhatsApp even to this day and um, and the mentorship opportunities, the grant you received. Uh, that, that's all so great. And I'm so happy to hear you created your website and, and are teaching and doing well. So thank you so much. Ronaldo, would you like to uh, share a little bit about your experience for us? For sure. Thank you, Dina and Erica. I was listening to her explaining about the process and I was so nostalgic because it was a long way. But the first thing I can say that Aspire Institute, and I'm trying to get used to this name because as you might know, we were like crossroads emerging leaders and this is stuck in my mind, such as self, but Aspire Institute, the, the main requirement, I guess, is commitment because during this process, you know, there's tons of stages and some assignments that we must do and we must to show for, for the, 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 the staff that we are willing to be there, we are disposed to learn and we really want to, to be part of it. So I can just endorse some of the topics from Fernanda because uh, I was thinking while she was talking also that we were like twins in the program because we took the same, uh, the same, the same course. I did it also introduction to digital humanities and it was amazing. Uh, we had the same work sessions in our mentoring. Uh, we had the same, the same mentor, I guess, which was Anna, Anna Dalcio, and we did some, some tasks together. So it was cool to, to listen to her. And what I can briefly highlight from the program, uh, I can say about my experience and my knowledge from Aspire Institute. The first thing is, it is amazing to have this contact with Harvard faculty. Uh, I remember when I was doing the first, the, the third stage, I guess, which is the courses, the online courses. courses. Uh, when I was listening to Professor Karen, uh, he was teaching in the online course from Digital Humanities. And right after when we had uh, the session, the live session with the finalists, he was there talking about politics and future and amazing things. And he was there. I was interacting with him. And it's funny because when we look at Harvard faculty, we think that our people so far away from our reality, but uh, Mr. Karen, such as Mr. Tarun, they were really funny and amazing, wonderful uh, people. So it's really interesting to have them in my network. Uh, another point that I'm really enjoyed is we, we are a global network. So right now for 
all of you know that what is happening in Ukraine and Russia, and we have people in there, and we have our group. We can send them love and send them uh, wishes for everything's okay, and we can know from them, from people who are there, uh, what is going on and having uh, information, and that's amazing because we are worldwide. So if you, for instance, you want to know how the educational system working in Afghanistan, for sure, you're gonna have this statement from this testimonial from someone from there because uh, in our community we have it. And I'm so really privileged because, you know, it's not that easy to connect with person worldwide. And this part of this network is something that really makes my eye shine because it's wonderful. Uh, in general, we have, uh, such as Fernanda said, those opportunity grants. Uh, it's another part of the application process within the program. Uh, we have like to apply, but every time, all the time we have new opportunities, uh, new things that are coming up is our communication manager and she's always talking with us by email, sending some new opportunities, some events and really, VAP things and tasks and opportunities that I um, feel really appreciated to have access through Aspire Institute. So to, to end this part, I just wish luck for everyone because uh, the application process is not that difficult, but it requires commitment. And I guess if you have it and if you want to be there and if you are into those requirements, you're probably gonna be successful. So that's it and thank you. Thank you so much, Ronaldo uh, and Fernanda for, for talking about your experience. I think you said it better than uh, either of us could. And, and it's great to hear that you're still in touch with other people and you know that they're all over the world. And how great is that to just learn um, from people that you might never meet otherwise, because this is a, a program where you, get to sit in your home country and, and learn um, from professors at Harvard and meet students from all over the world. So um, thanks for touching on that. I'm gonna hand it over again uh, to Erica to just go through the application briefly so that we can then get into some questions and answers. And um, if you have any questions for our alumni, you can ask at that time too. Thank you so much, Jenna. Um, so yeah, like she mentioned, I'm going to just show you very quickly what the application looks like, um, the first stage of the application, right? So if I'll share my um, screen very quickly. Here we go. So I'm right now on the main Aspire website, as you can see. So this is the link that um, Jenna has been sending on the chat. So here you can really read a little more about the program if you're interested, right? So there's uh, FAQ section, there are, you know, the program overview, that's where you can find that graphic that shows you each and every one of those stages of the program. So you can go ahead and take you know, some time to read through the website if you have the time, highly recommend it. But from here, we can also go right into the application itself. So you would just come to this website, click you know, apply now. That's gonna take you directly to um, here, to the landing page of the application. So assuming that you're new, you haven't started an application, you'll wanna create a new account in the system with us. Um, so I'm gonna put you on my name, Erica Spire. Um, you know what it is. So, sorry. Um, so when you select your email address, make sure you're using an address so you're gonna have access to for at least a year, because obviously we're thinking you don't make it through the finals. Um, and that's gonna be the address that we used to contact you at every stage of the program. And even through that entire year of extended leadership opportunities that we mentioned that go well beyond, right? Like after the, the final session in, July, um, in June. So if you're about to graduate university and you think you might lose access to your email um, address from university, go ahead and use a different one just so that you don't you know, have to miss out on any information about the program. Um, here, you just you know, select a password. I'm just gonna create one really quickly. Uh, accept the um, privacy policy, which you can read here if you have the time. And um, now you just sign up for an account with us. And it'll just take um, no, a few seconds. Um, you're always gonna get this pop-up right away. Again, just sharing some general information about how we're gonna use the information that you share with us. Um, 
if you want to continue receiving emails from us about the program, either invitations to the info sessions or updates, the newsletter about the program, go ahead and click this. You know, would like to receive information by email, continue. And here you are, applications, start the application for the 2022 program. Click continue. This is going to be pre-selected for you already. Click continue. And this will take you right into the actual application that I mentioned. It's just going to take a few seconds. Okay, so while that loads, um, I can share that. Typically, it lasts about 15 to 20 minutes, maybe, you know, on the long end, uh, maybe 30 minutes to submit the application. All the majority of students, I think, takes about 15, 20 minutes to do it. Of course, if you're uh, maybe more like me, you like to read things through a few times before you click submit because you're a little nervous that so you're going to include, you know, some erroneous information, you know, it might take a little longer, but on average, that's how long it takes. So, all right, so here we're just letting you know that you're, you've been sent a verification email, so make sure you do open that, you verify your email address, click next. Um, every answer that you input into the application will be saved into the system so that if you have to log out and continue your application at a later time, that information will be saved. You won't have to start from scratch. And we'll just go into the next section because we'll, I'll get to show you this. Um, okay. Um, and this will let you know that when you submit your application at the end, if there are any missing fields that you didn't complete, the application will let you know. So it won't let you submit without you um, answering some of those required questions. So here we are on the actual application. Here are the instructions, right? And some links to our email or social media that you can visit. Up here, you'll see all of the different sections of the application itself, the personal tab, which will just gather some personal information about you. On the back background section, we're gonna get to ask you a little more about, you know, um, your academic pursuits, your family composition, um, to get to know you a little bit better growth mindset in this section, it's more of a personality section, if you will. There are no right or wrong answers here. We use this section, this section just to get to know you better as a person. Like, who are you, right? Are you a very shy person? Are you very extroverted? You know, there's no right or wrong. We just like having a good idea of who the students are, right? Like, what are those personalities like? No, like, right or wrong answer, like I keep saying. So don't worry about what you answer here. Just answer to the, you know, the best that you can. And then program details, we're going to ask you a few extra questions, mainly related to um, your eligibility, right? Making sure that you're a first generation uh, student, like we mentioned, that you're between 18, 26 years old. Um, on this application, on this part of the application, we're going to ask you, for example, you know, the, have you traveled beyond your country, right? If you select yes, um, you'll have this pop up here where you'll be able to give us a little bit of a background of like, what was the reason for that travel, right? So we wanna get a sense of like, are you studying abroad? Um, maybe you um, you know, want a scholarship to go for a weekend to present or like a, or receive an award, right? For like a competition that you entered. Um, so you can go ahead and share that here. Further down on the application, there is a section here. It's optional, but you can include any relevant information you might wanna share with us about you, right? So if you have any special circumstances, for example, that you think are worth ringing up to us, that you anything you wanna clarify from information you're providing in your application, you can use this section. Or even just to include like a brief statement about you know, what you hope to accomplish, it is completely optional. Um, but for example, what, some of the ways that folks have used this in the past is, you know, we might've had an applicant who had, um, you know, their father was an engineer. They completed, you know, their undergraduate degree, but unfortunately the student lost that parent at a very young age. So they never really got to know that parent, right? That was the only person in the family who did actually attend university, right? So that's something we want to know because in our view, you know, that shouldn't disqualify you because even though your father might have gone to university, you still didn't get to have him in your life. You didn't have that influence, right, in your education because he was not there, unfortunately. So include that sort of information because we understand that not everything is black and white, yes or no, right? So use, make use of this section of the application just to share that kind of information with us. And then you just have to go through and accept the terms and conditions that so you can just sort of like read through, um, you know, essentially saying that we're going to keep your information in this database and we'll be using that to move you through the program. Um, and you, you know, come here and click submit. 
it's not going to let me zoom in because I haven't answered pretty much any of the questions. <laughs> so you can see here, it's going to let me know all of the sections that I'm still missing. So it's helpful because there are a lot of questions. If you by chance miss one, it'll show you exactly where that is. Um, but that's essentially it um, as far as the application goes. Make sure that you're submitting that application no later than March 15th. And that March 15th is local time for us. So Boston time in the United States. Um, so be aware of just the timeline. Do not wait until the last minute. I don't recommend it. And there is a benefit to applying a little earlier. And you might wonder, like, what is the benefit of applying now versus like waiting until, you know, March 12th? So we are doing some of the admissions right now on a rolling basis. So, for example, students who applied in early January have already been moved into stage one of the program and will be invited into stage two in the next few days. So there is that advantage. You do get to have a little more time on the program um, to get through those stages, um, which will be ultimately beneficial to you. So there is a benefit to doing that. But that's it. So I think for now, we'll probably go into um, a Q&A se session and just get to take some of those questions you might have about either the application process that I just went through or the structure of the program or the opportunities offered about um, from the program. If you want to raise your hand and unmute, you can do that, or you can put your questions into the chat. Yeah, you can ask questions to either Jenna or I or our um, two wonderful alumni who joined us today, because I know it must be more exciting probably to hear um, from the alumni who've gone through the entire program, right? So I have a question in the chat. Um, if one of my parents has incomplete higher education, can I participate? Yes. Thank you. This, this is actually a great clarifying question. So we're really looking at completion. So if your parent had graduated, got their, you know, their title um, in their undergraduate um, schooling, then you wouldn't qualify. But because they did not complete it, you, still, you do qualify. Um, and I want to add some further clarification around that particular requirement. So when we're talking about first in family to go university or first generation, we're mainly focusing on your parents and grandparents, right? So if you're, one of your parents did complete university, then you wouldn't be eligible for the program. Same thing for like a direct grandparent. Now, if you have a brother who went to university already, that's okay because you're still part of that first generation in your family, right? To go to university. So it is okay if you have siblings who are in university or have completed university, that is totally fine. Again, mainly focusing on your parents and your grandparents. Uncles, aunts, we don't really um, want, we don't need to know about them so much. We really focus on parents and grandparents. Um, someone asked on the chat if they're already enrolled in a master's program, are you eligible? Unfortunately, no. Um, you do have to be in there. Um, in, you have to be an undergraduate student or at least recently graduated from an undergraduate degree. Um, as long as you're within 18 to 26 years old, if you are already enrolled in either a PhD or a master's program, that's great. But unfortunately, you wouldn't qualify for the program um, because it is intended for undergraduate students, really. Those are great questions, by the way. Thank you, everyone. Um, please keep them coming. You can also raise your hand if you want to ask it live um, or if you're a little shy, you just want to put it in the chat. That's fine, too. Um, we'll just go through your answers, I'm sorry, to your questions and answer them here. Um, right. Um, are you seeing any questions on your end? Um, uh, that's a good one. So they're asking anything around the focus of the program, right? So is the focus of the program on research, writing papers, et cetera, or work market? So it's general leadership, I would say. So it's a leadership program that is intended to be applicable for students who are interested in any kind of profession. So there will be a little bit, you know, maybe on not, you don't have to write research papers or anything through this program. Um, but for example, there, when you move through the stages and you're invited maybe to submit a final application, we're gonna work with you to make sure that you're able to complete that application, have your material. So there are gonna be webinars on how to write a resume, webinars on how to write an effective um, later, you know, statement of purpose when you're applying for this program or even for graduate school down the line. So we're gonna help you a little bit with those writing skills, but very specific to, to things like that, right? Um, 
uh, there is also an aspect around helping you enter the work market, right? So as um, I think it was Fernanda might have mentioned, um, there are those extended leadership opportunities includes um, some internships. So we help try to help you secure internships in your country of residence through us. So that's part of what we do um, through the program itself. Um, the entire program is online. All of it is online, obviously, because it's the, the pandemic. So that's still, you know, it's a little um, iffy. <laughs> so we haven't um, decided to make the program live yet, not in person. So all of 2022 will be fully online. So live online like now. Um, and some of aspects of it will be asynchronous, like the Harvard X courses, for example, you get to take those on your own time, right? There are no live sessions for those. But there will be some parts of the program where there are live sessions like at a specific time that you can join. <clears throat> I also see a question about uh, if you've traveled abroad in a scholarship on a scholarship, are you eligible from Felipe? Uh, unfortunately, or actually, uh, if you received a fully funded opportunity, then if you include that in your application, most likely uh, we will consider you eligible. But please just make sure to put that in there as we are looking for students who have not had the opportunity to go abroad or study internationally um, because they are you know, low income first generation students. But if you, you know, got a great scholarship opportunity or if you had to go somewhere for safety, then those are things that we would love to know because we will consider you eligible. So just make sure to include those details in your application. So you provide us with uh, as much as possible and, and not just say, yes, I traveled and then nothing because yeah. then you won't get moved to the next stage. So, so just include that information, let us know, and then we can um, consider that when we are moving students to each stage of the program. You're right. And in fact, I think during the application, when I was showing you all that section where it asks, uh, have you traveled beyond your country? If you say yes, you will get a text box to include any additional information about the reason for that. So if you don't include anything, well, you know, that may disqualify you, but something like that where you received a scholarship to, or like an award and, you know, it was fully funded and you were able to travel because of that, make sure you include that information because that wouldn't disqualify you. Same thing if you had to migrate or move countries for like a variety of reasons, right? Like economic reasons or like for safety, that's fine as well. Um, so when asked, the duration of the program is one year, can we participate again next year? So if you make it into the final stage of the program, so you become a finalist, sort of like how Ronaldo and Fernanda did, they wouldn't be eligible to reapply again, right? However, if you made it only through the first few rounds, you are eligible to reapply. In fact, many of the finalists that we've had in the past, it was their second time applying, like maybe they made it as far as like taking the Harvard X courses on the second stage, and then they weren't able to continue and they returned. So in that case, you can return. Um, we got a question from Vivian. Yeah, good night. Uh, good evening, actually. Um, I, I didn't understand very well the, the choice of the what you're going to study. Just one thing that you can choose or you can study a lot of things. It wasn't clear. That's a good question. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so... On stage two, where you have those online courses that are asynchronous, everyone is going to be required to take the same course um, that is a general leadership course. Now, beyond that, you will have a lot of flexibility on what you take. So they're going to, there's going to be one extra online course that you'll be asked to, um, to complete, right, and audit. You get to choose among four different options. Now, in the next stage of the program, where we're talking about the live faculty webinars, there might be, you know, 20 or more of those, you will get to choose what topics. So if you have no interest in medicine, you don't have to attend, you know, you do not have to sign up for one of those. If you're only interested in business, there will be some related to business, you can just sign up for those. So you do get to choose what discipline to explore. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that question. So 
So I we see we have a question in the chat from Melissa. So you, you're someone who's currently an undergraduate at an American university on a full scholarship, right? For the, I'm assuming for the entire program itself. So because you are now studying abroad, right? Like a, more than a semester, you're doing your entire degree abroad, you wouldn't be eligible anymore because we're looking for, for students who have had very limited international experience and exposure. So something like a, like a weekend, you know, like a one week program that you got a scholarship to attend that would be fine but like a full program a full degree program abroad would disqualify you again because we're looking for like very limited exposure to um you know to travel and also just to international education but congratulations on um on that scholarship that's amazing Do we have any other last questions before we um, we conclude our session today? And Jen is just sharing some of those important links. Um, you can visit the website that I shared earlier where you have the FAQ, more information about the program itself, the direct link to the application and our email. So if there's any questions you have later on as you're thinking about the program or reading on the website, write to us and one of us will get back to you. <laughs> we monitor that account. Um, so it's any clarifications that you need, you know, about your specific circumstances or eligibility, please let us know. We're happy to just like clarify that for you. Thank you so much, uh, everyone who joined us today on your Thursday night. Um, we will wrap up shortly because we want to let you get on with your evening, go eat your dinner, things like that. So <laughs> we really appreciate you taking the time. Um, and if you have any further questions, like Erica said, please send us an email. If not, we really look forward to reading your application. And so that deadline is March 15th, so we encourage you to apply as soon as possible. You know, take your 20 minutes even right after this call and, and just uh, finish it up. I'd also like to thank our partners, uh, Legisla and Sina, Vitor, Ismarch, and Instituto 4. We thank you so much uh, for joining us and for inviting your students and your networks to this meeting. Uh, if you have any last words, our partners, then um, please, you know, uh, uh, chime in and, and say a thank you as well. Uh, if not, then, then we'll close out for today. Hi, everyone. It was so nice to see you all and to take your questions and hear from you, Ronaldo and Fernanda. Thanks, everyone. Have a great evening. Bye, everyone. Good luck. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.